Okay. And you have hit the record. All right. Well, I want to welcome you to another Light for the Journey. And uh, we're starting about a half hour late now. And <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah, my co-host. That is really cool. That's a cool thought, isn't it? Right. My co-host is Trent Deaver, and I'm Carl Tenney. I pastor in the church. We've given up. Uh, we have a studio set aside, and we've given up on that because of technical difficulties. And we've moved into the sanctuary, and it definitely looks different. Behind the cameras, and uh, the guy over there running everything today is a little bit different as well as Clifford, and he's come in to help us out, and we certainly appreciate his work behind the cameras. He's going, he promised us he'd make us look good. So if we don't, we get to blame him. <laughs> and uh, we welcome you to this, this edition of Light for the Journey, and hope that you enjoy it. There's going to be a various bunch of, of topics uh, today, so... Uh, I guess we'll just get started. Exactly. Well, you know, is there anything, how's your week going? Is there anything you want to say? I, I, I always open up. A good week. I mean, we've been doing just fine. Um, good service today. We'd like to do well, what you had to say today. Um, other than that, just ready to get the show on the road. Yeah, yeah, I was really excited today about because our church is taking some major changes. But we didn't come yeah. here to talk about that. We actually want to talk about... Um, a few of the things that's happened, um, not just in this past week. Last week, we, didn't, we did not get on. Um, Rachel, Trent's wife, who ended up in emergency. So, um, obviously, you had to take care of her. Yeah. You're a good husband. I appreciate seeing that as a pastor and as your pastor. Um, but she's doing better. Thank the Lord. She's actually sitting back here in the audience <laughs> with us, and she's cheering her husband on. Big bet on who will look better. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Trent. Uh, this week, uh, a couple things happened, and then there, uh, we'll go into uh, the week prior to as well. Um, in the week prior, the one event that I was, we were going to talk about was that in Europe, where, in one of the countries in Europe where there is no handguns permitted, you can't, unless you're the police, yeah. um, or you're in, you're in the military, you, you cannot carry uh, a gun. They had a man go in with a knife into the school and kill some students, um, which brings up the debate, you know, is taking away the guns or the bullets to the guns and limiting that, is that really the answer? So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, another, another topic that, that came up this week, um, Trent, and you said you, you read about it as well, yeah. is um, where this, this coach was fired for praying on the 50-yard line with his students, which is a practice that has been permitted for many years mm -hmm. at that school. Now all of a sudden, he uh, he's been put on. Uh, I don't I don't I don't think he got fired. I think Did it, he? it's paid leave. The paid. last I saw, it could have changed in the last few days. But yeah, so it'll be interesting what will what will come of that, and, and be, be watching that. And if you hadn't. Uh, if you haven't seen that, you can catch that on Fox. I, I, I caught the clip on Fox. And then the other, the other thing that I um, will bring up tonight is that um, where Ted Cruz fired back at the uh, moderators at the, the GOP, uh, the Republican debate, um, the American people tuned in um, and wanted to know, the, you know the differences between the candidates and the moderators went anywhere but there. And, um, and even the media is saying has done a, a disjustice to, uh, to the whole process. So we'll talk about those things. My question to you, again, I love, I love having you on this, uh, on this program. And what I really, really like is, uh, uh, you know, being a new believer, being young, you know, where, 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 is, where are the young people? Um, I feel like I'm disconnected uh, a little bit, and so I, I, I like what you bring. When you hear all this stuff, uh, when, when you see all of it, what, how do you think about your future? What, I mean, what, what, what do you, as an American, you're married, and you finish school, you want to get a, a business going, you know, um, children? I didn't ask Rachel. Well, I'm, I'm guessing children. Some, yeah, she's shaking her head. Yes. Yeah. Some babies. You're good with that too, right? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. good. Good. We got, we're, we're on live. So now the whole <laughs> world knows. <laughs> so, you know, when you, when you look at your future and you, as an American, what, how's that? A, 
do for you? What, what do you? I mean, I think it's you know individually, like individually, like with my wife and I and my immediate family. Like um, I'm very optimistic for okay. like our future. Um, as far as like the state of the union and like you know the society in America, it's very disconcerting. Like you don't really know, you know, what kind of world we're going to be living in in ten years or even twenty years. You know, you bring up the idea of children, and you know at this point you really have to think like. What kind of society would you be bringing your children up into in the in the upcoming years? You know, we have violence and crime and you know uh, political messes and things are just very shaky and turbulent right now in the country. And like I said, I like to try to remain optimistic and positive and think that you know in due time there will be a president that can come in and kind of just fix the system kind of rearrange things and get things smoothing, like sailing smoothly, but like I said, at the same time, it's very, it's just discon disconcerting looking at it. You don't necessarily know what's going to happen. Well, in, in a, you know, in another, not quite two years, I think it is, um, we will have a change in leadership, yep. um, whether it's Democrat or Republican, that remains to be seen. Um, are you are you hopeful with, with politics? I don't know if um, I mean, personally, you know, Democrat and Republican aside, I'm not very optimistic about many of the candidates that we have. The few that I am optimistic about, I know don't have enough backing to, they're not major leaders in the race. Sure. You know, so you, you, are, you automatically know the people that you associate with and the people you would like to support. Unfortunately enough, you know that they're not, they're not going to make it. They're either independent party or, or things of that nature. So. Um, like I said, as far as the front runners, um, I don't think that, in my opinion, that they're necessarily going to be able to get the job done. But like I said, you just you stay optimistic and hope that perhaps they can they can fix some of the things that were broken, and then the next president can fix some more things that are broken, and then you know in the next 20, 20 to thirty years we can get back to you know the strong, powerful America that we once we once were. The leader. That leader we, of the free world. Sure. I don't know if we're we still own that title or not. Yeah, that's a good question. I I kind of feel like we we've, we've slipped, mm -hmm. you know, in uh, in the numbers, if you will. I know the way that we're viewed internationally is pretty poor. You know, the way that other countries view America as a whole is is pretty poor, and that's you know that's disappointing. Well, yeah, we we are. Um, when I, when I was online and I was playing some online games with some Aussies, if you will, <laughs> you know, so some, of my, some of my online friends were from Australia and we, we would strike up conversations and we did some uh, you know, outside the game dialogue and, and, and one guy was um, into networking and doing websites and designs and I have photography website and so I told him he could use my stuff so we were helping each other but one of the things that, th that he said that I thought was so interesting and he was not alone in it but but a lot of the folks from Australia when they think about Americans they just think we're gun-toting crazy yeah, you know um, <laughs> which which comes back to our our topic to, to going to school with a lot of like international like foreign exchange students that's kind of the same thing I've heard is you know just the uh, stigma of being very violent very almost lawless in a way and I think that's funny because we kind of look at other countries the same way. <laughs> but yet, um, we're definitely viewed as a as a as a cowboy type nation. Of a hey, that's actually type. what they called us—a yeah. bunch of cowboy <laughs> kind of things. Um, yeah, that that isn't really what America is. I know we have bad eggs. Um, I know that that uh, there are uh, knuckle. <laughs> Can preachers say knuckleheads? I think knuckleheads acceptable. <laughs> okay, there are knuckleheads, uh, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, looking at this with your children, you want you want an America that is fixed. Yeah, or definitely in a better state than it is right now. Do you have hope? I mean, definitely. You, you have to have hope, or else what's the point? Okay. You know, I mean, you have to stay optimistic and and remain hopeful. Would you, Trent, would you say that you and Rachel and, and um, a lot of the people that you know, they, they are hopeful, young people? 50-50, I think. Okay. I think a lot of them have kind of given up on the secular world and are, are really kind of closing themselves off and indulging themselves in you know the Christian lifestyle and in the Christian society and in the Christian world. Young people? 
not necessarily well because you're up at my college it's you know with the christian college that's all i'm surrounded by are young christian-minded students mm -hmm. so but as a whole i mean i think um you know secular students and secular individuals i either see and you know even here in rochester is and I know this is kind of hasty, but you're either you're either really engulfed in your religion, or you're really engulfed in crime. And I know there is an in between. There are good, hardworking, you know, non-religious people in the mm -hmm. world, but those are kind of the two the two extremes. And you know, you're you're either rejecting today's society, or in one way or another, you know, you're you're either breaking laws or you're distancing yourself, following following kings and rulers outside of our political system. So if, if I'm hearing you right, do, am I understanding that you, from your perspective, th I, I understand this is perspective, folks, yeah, and, and we don't know it all, and we're certainly not the experts, if you will, you know, don't have our, that's not where the PhDs are headed. <laughs> um, but we care. That, that's the point. We care. That's why we do this, this program, is we care about how we help society, how, how as a church, yeah. you know, how do we help people? So we care. But if I hear you, your perspective on things is, is that even, even for Christians, it's kind of like we're closeting ourselves, yeah. kind of like, boy, that's bad news. We don't want to hear it. Is that, Just do, is that what I, do I understand uh, ignorance right? Ignorance is bliss. Okay. Is a, yeah, it is, is isn't it? It's a good term to use for that one, yeah. Um, just, just yeah, keeping your, your head above water and trying to stay out of the trials and tribulations of everyday society and focusing on, you know, the higher power, focusing on the so word. And a couple weeks ago, you said that most young people are not engaging in the politics. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember that? Yeah. You know, that the quote, yeah, I could go back. We could get clips <laughs> and play the clips just like the big times. Right. Um, you know, do, do you think that's part of, of, of why is that they don't see, they don't think it, there's... I think that young young people are more. They believe that the political system isn't there to support them. They look at it as if um, you know laws and and regulations and, and presidential races and representation um, is more or less all for big business. Um, you know, not and for like the older generations and for things like that. Not necessarily you know, the student age or the college age people in the country. And I know um, for better or worse, you know, however someone may feel about President Obama, that is one thing I will definitely give him credit for was during his election, he got a lot of young people involved in yes, he did. politics. Yes, he did. Which is, can be a, which is a great thing. Um, hopefully that can continue. But like I said, for most of the front runners that I've followed on you know this election race that's not really the aim that they're taking they're kind of putting you know the young people on the back burner again and focusing on you know immigration and other things issues. other than you know like college college age issues so i think a lot of a lot of um like uh, late teenagers early 20s uh early 30s individuals are just thinking that like i said it's not necessarily a system built for them so why even concern yourself with it? Why even you know follow up with it or, or vote or anything like that? Because at the end, it's not going to change anything for their daily life. Well, you said you were hopeful. I so so tell me where the hope is I, in it. I'm and I'm going to go somewhere with this. Yeah, actually. I'm hopeful, but I know there's a lot of people that are not. There's a lot of people that don't even bother voting. There's a lot yeah. of people that just think it's a waste of time. Given, and, and maybe this is what you're, what, what you're really driving at, but given that Ted Cruz has blasted the moderators uh, for MS, say it again, MS, MSNBC. Uh, yeah, you know, it was NBC when I was growing <laughs> up. Uh, given that he, he has done that and, and basically just call, called him on it, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and what is happening is is that I think, I think America, young and old, is waking up to the fact of how, how much media has, has influenced, oh, you know, probably who gets elected, has influence, and not really, um, it, when I was growing up, the big difference with media when I was growing up is, is that they pride themselves on just, just sticking to the facts, Yeah. okay? 
That's, that's not the case today. Not at all. Um, what, they're, what they're trying to do is, is they want to they wanna weigh in, if you will. Sway and opinions. And sway opinions. Media make, things look, make things look like in a certain way, um, which comes back to all this is, I'm going somewhere with this actually. <laughs> um, you know, when that gets exposed, is, is, is part of what, what is happening to Americans, why we, we turn off or why we want to go, as I put it, kind of closet ourselves, whether we're Christians or whether we're secular. And, and for young people, you know, we want to have hope. I hear you saying that. We want to have hope. We are actually hopeful. But this is hard. But, but we don't see it in the current system. Yeah, exactly. We don't see it in the current system. You know, but we, but we want to have children. We want them to have a better place to live um, than, you know, than what we're, we're dealing with. There's debt, you know, the debt is crazy in, in our Insane. country in particular. Um, ISIS around the world. I mentioned, I mentioned about this, um, uh, this fella who took a knife, yep. you know, gun control. And, and, you know, you come back to that and Ted Cruz is exposed. So, so there's this disillusionment is what, if, if, I, if I'm reading between the lines, uh, would you say that I'm calling it pretty close? It, it, that, we're dis, that as young people, we're disillusioned with where we are as a nation, where we are as a country and as a people kind of thing. It's like, and we, you know, what are the answers? Mm -hmm. okay. Definitely. Is, that, is that a good descriptive? I think young people are more focused on, you know, social media and pop culture and, and those things are, are kind of covering the real issues of the country. You know, when you have everyone on iPhone checking Facebook every day, they're not checking Fox News, they're not checking MSNBC, they're not checking BBC, you know, they're not involving themselves in current events of the time. They're more focused on, like I said, the, the, the coolest song that came out that day, or, sure. you know, a cool picture that someone may have posted, and that, that's so insignificant at the end of the day, but that's, like you said, through media. It's and coping, almost, is it? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's just, coping. It's just it's closeting yourself off from the turmoil that's going on around. Cool. I got some good news then. See, I, we, we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, I don't, you know, I think if we're going to make changes in our society, I think the church, if we'll step up to it, mm -hmm. the church has the best, best message ever. And I believe, Trent, that, you know, changing one heart at a time, causing, um, and we want to do this, we want to have this debate on race soon, yeah, right? Definitely. Yeah, And, and, you know, in the church, you know, God is, God is colorblind. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm going to be a true preacher, God is colorblind. You know, why isn't the church colorblind? But, but that, coming back to this, you know, with all that we're talking about, um, to, to be honest with you, you know, I see the hope. And if the church will step up, I think it's young folks uh, need to hear the, the, the good news that there is a God, that he can... People can be literally transformed from the inside out, which is what I think, I hope that Americans, particularly the nation in which I live in, will wake up to. And, and then that the church, the church will step up and say, hey, we got, you know, we, we, we don't want to just sell hope. We want you to know that you can actually change, that, that people can really become all that they, they dream and that they can have for their children. I'm just you know, curious on what it's going to take for the church to step up. You know, I feel like as of late, um, we've kind of allowed ourselves to be trampled on, you know, with the removing of the Ten Commandments at public buildings. And, you know, you even spoke on the football coach that is now facing disciplinary action because of, of praying before, during, or after a game. You know, we have, like you said earlier too, we have ISIS running amok in our country and all over the world, persecuting Christians just for their beliefs. Like, what what will it take for, you know, Christian leaders and for the church to rise up and, and start to present themselves as a power in the world once again? I don't know. I think before you started coming, you've been coming here how long? I would say probably close to three months now. Three months. I think it was before you started coming and I had been on the internet and I was looking at some some photos um, because I was quite taken and stirring in my soul was the, the, the men who were in jumpsuits who gave their life for the cause of Christ and 
And I was actually looking for that picture, and so I, I typed it in and I Googled it, and what came up was so, um, well, there's not even a word to, to really describe what it did to my soul. I wish I had never seen these, and yet I, I'm glad that I'm, I'm not ignorant in it. Yeah. But what, what is happening to children, I saw pictures of children crucified in, in, in such demeaning ways. Uh, their captors leading them and you can see the innocence on these children I mean I, I, I've just been changed by that my struggle is what can I do about that I wanted to bring those pictures there's a question here I wanted to bring those pictures in and begin to flash them in front of my congregation but it would have been so horrific yeah. it, you know that I didn't want to do that to them you know what do I do <laughs> you know what you got some suggestions for me? I mean, that, that, that's a tough one. I do know for our chapels for school, um, we will have, each week we have a different guest speaker, a different visiting preacher. Um, and I do remember last year we had a, there's a, a corporation in, in the country called M13. And it's actually for uh, human trafficking <laughs> of, uh, you know, underage male and females, you know, being used and sold and prostitution and things like that and I do know that when they came to our chapel it wasn't it wasn't you know a nice friendly rainbows and unicorns you know speech at all it was a very much so a disturbing slideshow and, and you know heart-wrenching images and things like that so you've seen some of them and and I do know that like it changes you like you do leave the building a different person than when you came in but it kind of comes back to I think I said a few weeks ago like what what are you you know what are you to do about it like what can what can one person do? What can one church, what can one congregation do to change the world? Well, one thing's for certain. We cannot be silent. No. We cannot be silent, church. We I cannot feel like the church be silent. Has, yeah. has been very much. Evil, and, evil is winning in the world right now. And, and we need to step up. And will it cost us? Yes, it will. You know, we, it, it's, it's a living sacrifice. Well, I certainly appreciate you. What do you, you know, we've got about 10 minutes left. We need to put a plug in for the college. We need to put a plug in for here. Uh, we are in the sanctuary right now because we couldn't get our studio to, cameras to cooperate. Um, Still got to what what, what did you think about this coach? Um, I don't think, it's hard because, like, like, I understand it. I don't, I don't agree with it, but I understand it. You are, to the best of my knowledge, it is a secular school. I, that the coach was coaching for. The players were of a secular school. Um, you had made the comment earlier that many of, that this tradition had been ongoing for quite some years, yep. and then all of a sudden it became a problem. For me, that just automatically tells me that there was a complaint. Someone in the stands, some somebody's mom, somebody's dad, didn't like it. You know, we get back to that political correctness speech again of having to please everyone. Um, I know when we were when we were getting everything worked out and we were you know live streaming at the beginning of the show we were talking about you know as far as like my athletic standpoint with Crossroads College and you know with our kind of praying mentality is if we have a home game and especially if we're playing another like another Christian school um, we will pray out we will publicly pray in the in center court. You know, we'll, we'll line up, you know, brothers in arms, and, and our coach or our team captain will come in and lead us in prayer. And then at the end of the game, win, lose, or draw both teams, we actually have a rule where we have to mix in with the opposite team, and we all pray together as two teams. Do but, you guys pray, pray to win? i got to know this. Do you pray to win? No, no. We, <laughs> we, we pray for, for safety and health of, of okay. everyone involved, sure, more or sure. less. Sure, sure. I figured it's mine. Um, and then, but like I had made the comment previously too, is when we do go to a secular school, we, we don't publicly pray. We will still do our, our same prayer ritual in the locker room, but we do not go out and, and do the, the center court circle up, you know, ritual that we will do on our, on our own home court. Okay. Well, this has been fun stuff to talk. Yeah. I mean, we, oh, yeah. we, we didn't narrow in on anything. It's very eclectic today. I've got the five minute notice. Uh, we, we need to kind of wrap some things up. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. We certainly appreciate it. We don't have all the answers, but let me, let me do share this with you. I, I'd fail God if I didn't at least. <laughs> Scripture says, you know, that the, that the government will be upon his shoulders. When we talk about Jesus, he's the Prince of Peace and that he carries the government on his shoulders. There is a day coming when, when the king will rule 
triumphantly. And all these problems that we have will be gone. I look forward to that day. Yeah, Make sure when you have kids, you let them know, that's Trent. That's what you keep the hope for. Yeah, yeah. Um, Trent got a new tie. I love it. Uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks to his mom, thanks to yeah. his mom. Yeah. So good job. I love it. <laughs> uh, it it's um, worship service. I forgot where I'm at. Uh, why don't you plug in for the church? What do you what, you know? You know where you come every week? Um, so Oak Hills Wesleyan Church. I don't know the address exactly. Four ten twenty eighth Street. Four ten twenty eighth Street here in Rochester. Minnesota. Um, we offer 10.30 a.m. Sunday yep. Sunday chapel, Sunday services. I do know Monday evenings um, we offer a youth group as well as Sunday mornings we offer a children's church. And uh, I think Wednesday nights you guys have like a glow in the dark. Something. Yeah, that's a Bible study. Uh, a, a Bible study. We actually stream that. Okay. That's stream. A glow in the dark Bible yeah. study. And I think, what is it, Sundays before the services you have an adult there's Bible an adult study. Bible study goes on Sunday at 9 and 30, 9 30. So. Now tell us about Crossroads. Uh, Crossroads College, 920 Mayo Wood Road, Southwest. <laughs> um, great school to go to. You know, it is, it is a Christian school. It is a uh, private school. So it is small. Student population is right around like 100 to 120. Um, great place to go. Like I said, they offer dual, dual degree programs in ministry and the program of your choice. Uh, men's and women's athletics. We're actually looking to add more uh, athletics here in the next year or two. We're looking at um, volleyball and soccer. So that's exciting. It's going to bring in some more students and get our student population up and things like that. Um, but just a great environment, a great place to go and study. And, you know, as my coach put it to me when, when I was recruited, uh, if you wanted to, to come and, and get your mind right, get your studies right, and get to know God right, uh, Crossroads College is probably the best place to come. Okay, good job. This is our this is our program, so we can run it the way we want. This is your chance to redeem yourself. He has a beautiful wife, and I gave him a chance earlier. You got anything <laughs> you want to say to Rachel? We'll have her on. A, we'll have her on the program at some point. But uh, just extremely grateful that she was able to get through the situation sure. that she experienced yeah, here last week. Yeah. Um, it definitely was a, a trying time for us. Um, much prayer was was used and needed. And, uh, you know, I love you, and I'm just thankful that, you know, everything is working out. Yep, you heard that, Rachel, to the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in for Light for the Journey as we look at some of the issues and try to make sense of it and walk with Christ. God bless you. Amen. And did we keep it under 30? We did it. Nice. Just barely. Yeah.